these seats right here? Two, 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 two. Can't really see that, but two. Only very important people sit in these seats. Uh, oh. For those of you who don't live in Spokane, the Garland Theater is a theater in the Garland District. It's a discount theater, which means it shows second-run movies. I also did a video about the milk bottle, which you can view right up here. It's also located in the Garland District, and it's right down the street from the Garland Theater. Now, the reason why I think that a lot of people like this theater is because they have an emotional connection to it. Like, for me and for a lot of people, I believe we remember it as something we went to as kids. Uh, technically, I'm still a kid, but I like to say that term. When I was a kid, you know, you'll see that in my other videos. One of the cool things that I remember as a kid is, one of the things that I've wondered since I was a little kid is, so for me, I remember when I was a kid, I would go to it with my whole family, and we would just like go watch a movie there. And we have a pretty big family, so going out to the theater was kind of a big deal. And I just remember going to the Garland Theater, we didn't call it the Garland Theater. I don't even remember what we called it, but we were just like, okay, we're going to the theater. And I always remember it was that theater. So it was fun and I got a lot of good memories from it. I do need to go there soon, okay? So I'm just waiting for a good movie to come out and I'm booking it there. As of 2022, this theater is 76 years old and turns 77 in November. Currently, this building is owned by Catherine Fritchie and she's been the owner since 1999. I didn't meet with her, but I did meet with Jasmine Barn, who is the general manager at the theater, and we just talked about the history of it. Yeah, so we do discount movies. We do second runs, so we're the ones that do the movies once they leave major theaters and before they go on DVD. And then we also do like cult classic films, like from like the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Uh, we have a full kitchen and a full bar. You can drink inside of the theater, which is different than a lot of theaters in Spokane. And we do like private rentals like that too as well. So the theater opened on November 21st, 1945. Uh, when it opened, it was the largest theater west of the Mississippi. Um, it had a thousand seats. There was a little cigar lounge in the lobby. There was a shop where the woman would go after the movie. Um, it was built like a bomb shelter pretty much because it's post-World War II, so there was still all that scare there. Um, and then it's been a continuous operation for, I guess it's almost 77 years now. Right after World War II, there was a growth of people in Spokane. A document by Wade Blanton and Catherine Fritchie says this, between 1940 and 1950, the population of the county grew 35% to 221,561 people. By the way, this document is a great source of information. So if you want to check it out, down in the description. The document goes on to explain that a group of investors decided to The document goes on to explain that a group of investors decided to build a theater at this time. This is how the document describes opening day. Let me try to read it in a cool voice. The theater opened with great fanfare on Wednesday, November 21st, 1945. Patrons formed a double line for more than a block when the doors first opened at 6.45 p.m. By 7.30, the 980-seat auditorium was filled, ready to watch a double feature. By the way, a double feature is just like a double movie night. You just watch two movies instead of one. The lobby was filled with chrysanthemum, chrysanthemums, chrysanthemums with chrysanthemums, pom-poms, and red roses sent by well-wishers and displayed on bulletin boards with congratulatory telegrams from Bing Crosby, who actually lived in Spokane for a little bit, a while actually, since he was like three to something, I don't know, but he was, he lived in Spokane for a while, just that's a little bit of history for you. That's not in the document, but it's still pretty cool. It goes on to say a number of different people probably famous people that I should know about. Cary Grant, Dorothy Lamour, Bob Hope, Eddie Cantor, and Ginger Rogers. Switching gears a little bit, this theater was made by the firm Funk, Molander, and Johnson. Now, they've built, or not built, but designed a lot of buildings around Spokane, and some of the buildings they've designed include Cowles Memorial Auditorium Building and the Dixon and McEachern Halls 
at Whitworth University. Just for your guys' information, all three of those buildings are basically in the same place. So this is the McEachern, or however you pronounce it. This is Dixon Hall, and this is Cowles Memorial Auditorium. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I've never heard of those buildings, ever. Well, guess what? Me neither. The only reason I chose them is because they're right by my house. I live right next to Whitworth University, and I think that if you, like, go someplace, where the thing actually happened in history, it makes it a lot more real to you. If you just watch this video and never go to the Garland Theater, you're never gonna know what it's like. I mean, you, you like kinda know, but like it'll become much more real to you if you actually visit the Garland Theater, which I recommend you do. Another building they designed is the St. Charles Church in Spokane. Now, one of the reasons why I like this church is because it has a lot of art in it that was made by Harold Belays, okay? But that's, that's a topic for another time. If you want to learn more about Harold Blaze and his art, comment down below. Don Clifton became the owner in 1988, and he turned it into a discount theater. People talk about him a lot because he was here for every, like, movie. And at the start of the show, he'd walk up and, like, welcome everybody. He'd stand in front of the screen and say, I hope you enjoy the movie, do, like, a little speech about the movie. And people talk about that all the time. Like, I remember that owner who used to announce every film that played, and he really made it into the community theater it is today that people have all these fond memories of. He turned it into a discount theater in 1988. The tickets were $1, and the bottomless popcorn was $3.50. That's how the Garland Theater got its name, the Dollar Theater. So people still walk in, they call us the Dollar Theater, and even though we're $5 now, but that name has... Because of all those years of it being a dollar, that name really stuck. Jasmine said that since 1945, one of the changes that has taken place has to do with the number of seats in the auditorium. One of the big changes is that we don't have a thousand seats anymore. We have 500 because people are getting taller and bigger as the years go on. So we're not as squeezed in there. The bar was a big addition um, that really set us apart. And just I think the movie experience is different with how much we have access to it at home. Um, that's how like our throwback series do a lot better than newer movies because people like to come and like relive that experience of like, I remember watching this in the 80s, now I'm watching it in the theater again. Uh, but yeah, I think just the movie going experience is very different. Because of COVID, the theater has been closed for more than a year. Well, we were closed for 16 months. Um, at the point halfway through the whole shutdowns and we technically could open, we anticipated a second shutdown, so we just waited. Coming back after 16 months was a little wild. Some of our staff moved on to other things. We had to retrain like a brand new staff upon opening, but it's going better now. It's really, yeah, <laughs> it's slowed down. <laughs> of course, now it's back open and you can visit it. You and me, me and you. Both of us together. If you know where that's from, comment down below. You're awesome. To conclude this video, I wanna say I really need to watch a movie, okay? You just watched a movie. This is, this is kinda like a movie, okay? But now you can go to the theater, know the history of the theater, and watch a movie. So that's pretty cool. I recommend you do that. Hopefully if you guys check this theater out, you'll know more about the history of the theater, not that it's just historical. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you want to, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Thank you. Man, that person kind of scared me. I was like, whoa.